there, guys. Sean Michael here from On Microsoft, and we are here to talk Microsoft. We got a lot of news this week. We got composable shells, phones that might fold, all sorts of build news, lots of things, and we're, we're here to catch up on everything. Uh, apologies about last week. We had some technical glitches. We are doing our best to get uh, on those here, but we are here this week, and we th thank you very much for joining us. As always, I am here with my co-host, Sean Ung. How are you doing, Sean? Doing great. Thank you very much. It's a beautiful day here in Seattle. Yeah. You know, it's, you know what I found out recently? When you are shooting video, the weather in Seattle is actually for video. <laughs> really? Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah. Maybe uh, I oh, <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, well, I will ask weather recently. Um, overcast days where it's very bright but there's even cloud coverage over the entire sky very good for video because there's no glare but there's a ton of lighting uh-huh interesting yeah so you wouldn't know that you'd think clouds would be worse they're actually great because uh -huh. you get a ton of lighting it's like you know with photography you get like a light diffuser yes yep that's actually the clouds kind of act as a light diffuser that gives uh -huh. you perfectly even light okay. across everything so now I know. Next time when it's cloudy, that'll be my perfect uh, filming see, weather. This why, <laughs> see, next time we do a HoloLens demonstration, we'll have to do it outside. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. No, it's uh, it's been a, a good good week for, for Microsoft-related news. You know, we had a build that came out. Uh, but I, I think probably the, the there are two really big bit, bits of news that are kind of all over the place in terms of um, a coverage. And... The first is this, it's called, it's a composable shell, uh, that's what it's called internally at Microsoft, and it it was revealed by uh, Windows Central talking about, basically, Microsoft has worked very hard to make a common core across Windows, the one yep. core. So phones, uh, tablets, PCs, of course tablets, PCs running, you know, on Windows 10 full, uh, but even Xbox and HoloLens, they're part of this one core. And that's what helps universal apps, you know, work across everything, and it's wonderful. And at least for fans of Microsoft and and Windows, it really does help with development. I, I've seen all sorts of apps been able to jump between them. And to be honest, you probably saw apps on some devices like Twitter on Windows Phone that I'm not sure we would get an updated version if Windows 10 One Core wasn't a thing. But Microsoft is going to take that one step further, reportedly. Um, though I, at this point, I trust it's pretty accurate. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a, it, they're going to bring in the common shell, adaptable, composable shells of yes. Windows 10, which would mean that certain elements that yet you see on Windows PC that you don't currently see in other types of devices could be easily adapted over. Mm -hmm. And then also, it's going to help development across the board. So, Sean, you saw this as well. Yep. This is pretty exciting news. Yeah. Yeah. I guess my question is, how do you, how would that, what would that shell even look like? Are we going to see the Windows desktop shell changing, or are we going to see other UIs change to match the Windows desktop? <laughs> well, I think, the, I think the nice thing about a shell being composable is... Is, and we've seen Windows 10 Mobile, it's like they made it look as much as they could like um, like, like Windows Full, mm -hmm. but not quite. But you saw some videos and they'd say, oh, well, here, look, we've made the notifications and action center on Windows hmm. Mobile look more like this. You mentioned, uh, I think, in our last episode that <laughs> the start menu of Windows 10 looks quite a bit like Windows Phone. So they made those look similar. Yeah. But yep. with the composable shell, it would work, I think, a lot like how tablet mode works, mm, where okay. where you, you're, you're having Windows 10, you know, people brought up, there's this new device coming out in Japan, the six inch tablet. Well, is it gonna look great with tablet mode? Six inches, that's the same size as an HP Elite X3. Yeah. <laughs> well, right now, if you ship that tablet with full Windows 10, you're going to have the Windows 10 tablet mode layout. But with the composable shell running through full Windows 10, even if it's on ARM, you would have it where it could be reshaped to look like Windows 10 Mobile, even though it's technically full Windows 10 as an operating system. And on a six inch device like that, that's definitely preferred. 
I'm not in love with tablet mode as it is, but I certainly think on like a six inch device, it would be much better to have the look of Windows 10 mobile. Mm -hmm. And it's actually full, so when, of course, you know, yep. Continuum, it's not a little bit like is Windows 10. Yep. It just, it just it, there's no, there's no, it looks like, it feels like it would just be Windows 10. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, you know, the, I'm really, really excited about that. I think this is what really everyone's been wanting since the beginning. <laughs> and to see that we're actually heading towards this way and to see that this is actually happening, in my opinion, that's super exciting. I would love, mm. uh, I think the Xbox, let me know if, uh, if I'm wrong, but I think the Xbox has a full processor in it. And theoretically, Microsoft, if they wanted to, could make it so that you could hook up a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard to your Xbox and have it be full Windows 10 with a desktop experience, except that... Could technologically, maybe, I'll even say probably, will, I, no, I, I doubt it. <laughs> you, don't, you don't think so? You don't think no, so? No, I don't. I, I, I wish they would because... Maybe Project I Scorpio, can, we can hope, right? <laughs> I still think you could sell an Xbox as the ultimate university device. You'd say, Mom, Dad, I, you really should get me an Xbox because, especially if they did this, but you could run Windows, it can do Office, say, oh, and I can game on it too. But mostly I'd be using it for Office, Mom, I swear. No, but I don't think they would do that. But what you do get is... Um, Windows 10 on more devices. You know, some people are saying, what, what is something like this and all these developments? What do they mean for Windows 10 Mobile? And uh, I'm not sure exactly. I mean, it's it's difficult to tell what, mm -hmm. what Microsoft is doing with Windows 10 Mobile. But if you had Windows 10 on ARM with a composable shell, it would feel like you were still running Windows 10 Mobile in terms of the layout but then you would have perfect continuum because it actually is Windows 10. Some people are calling this like reverse continuum, mm. where continuum now is you have a phone, but when you plug in a monitor with a big screen, it looks like a PC. This is reverse continuum. You have a full Windows 10, but when shoved onto a smaller screen, it changes the UI and adapts it to that smaller to look like mobile. I, I think that's really smart, and I think it sets up a really important thing for the future. Satya Nadella has said things like, it's about the mobility of the experience of the person, not the device. Well, over time, devices are going to get more and more powerful. So you're going to start seeing mobile devices with just that are powerhouses. So I'm very interested to see where this goes and how it, how it turns out. Yep. Me too. Me too. Yeah. And, you know, the HoloLens UI right now is, in my opinion, probably the most different then Windows 10, Xbox, and Windows Mobile, like all of those, there's, there's kind of what I still call the Metro interface, even though that's yeah. long gone. Uh, the HoloLens doesn't really have that, but I would gladly welcome that interface coming to the HoloLens. And I did, in the, in the composable you know, story, there was mention of the HoloLens, so I was pretty excited to hear that as well. Yeah, well, I, I mean, this is really, they always, Windows 10 was supposed to be, Mm -hmm. And, you know, when apps, it's kind of like this. And I think, like I said, you get at, I don't think we'd have a redesigned Windows 10 Twitter app if there wasn't Windows 10 with Universal uh, app platform. Yep. And there are other ones like that and the podcast apps that show up on Xbox. But this, this plays into all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, if you have full Windows 10 on ARM, on a six inch device or a five inch device, or if they ever make a device smaller than five inches. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then again, uh, you know, they grow, they grow, they shrink, whatever. And then you have Windows 10 full, you could theoretically have games powered through a phone. Maybe not today with where the power mm, processes are at. Yeah. But in the future, you oh, could yeah. have theoretically games played where your phone you bring it to a, a monitor and you're playing games through your phone, but it's full Windows 10. Wow. So you like ha have an Xbox One wireless controller, uh, you know, beam to it through Bluetooth maybe, hook it up to a, a monitor, and then play, play something. What, what game would you play? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying theoretically. I mean, we don't even have confirmation that full Windows 10 on ARM is even coming to a phone. 
Yeah. But with full Windows 10 coming to ARM, which is a big announcement in itself, and composable shells, I have to at least hope. And then we have another story as well that gives a little more hope that there could be a device that would really take advantage of this composable shell, maybe more so than anything we've seen, and that's the Surface uh, foldable. It's not confirmed. What we're hoping could be a Surface device. Hmm. Yep, that's right. That's right. So this, uh, so there's a story about the rumored Surface phone. Are we jumping to that now, Sean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the rumored Surface phone that'll be coming out. Hopefully, I don't. I have no idea when. Uh, speculative. You know, some people say 2018. I'm hoping sooner. Uh, but the Surface phone will be a foldable device where when you when it's folded there'll be a screen on either side and when you open it up it'll be kind of like a tablet with the full screen and so you can get the mobile interface when it's small uh, fitting in your pocket but then when you open it up you can actually use it with a mouse and keyboard it's got a much larger screen you can do Excel spreadsheets or whatever you know you'll have a, a decent size screen what so if uh, if a phone is unfolded, Sean. How big is that actually? That that'll still be pretty big, right? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, to give a little bit of background, I mean, these are patent filings. Now, yes. the, the thing that's risky <laughs> with patent filings is sometimes you get patent filings that are just Microsoft checking things out. Uh, they they have a developer or a, you know somebody builds something and they want to protect that and and they never see market. Uh, and sometimes they they do. The reason that these have been given a little more credence by a lot of people is, um, well, one, some people have, have talked to some sources about it uh, as well. And, and I know Windows Central's talked about it quite a bit. You, you talk about something like um, a patent, but they've looked into who filed the patent versus who's done yeah. some other surface thing. So it's never guaranteed, mm -hmm. but we're, it looks, it, it's like if you were here, you're focusing in yeah. on what could be this device. Um, I don't know, if you had a five inch device and then you unfolded it, it would be a bit of an odd aspect ratio. I guess you'd have to rotate it. Would that make it a three by two aspect ratio? I don't know how that would line up. I, I guess it depends. I mean, I, Microsoft's famous for changing their aspect ratios on all their devices. So. Yeah, well, Surface <laughs> is kind of going three by two. Uh -huh. I think the Surface, the Surface Book is a three by two. The Surface Studio, I think, is three by two. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. It's it's now considered like the perfect uh, ratio. <laughs> so maybe you, maybe you see a phone do that as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe if it does fold, maybe it'd be a similar aspect ratio. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope so. I, I like it. You know, there were things I liked about the long narrow screen, but you just couldn't use it in tablet more because it was yeah. just too long. <laughs> I've even um, and then you want a device that works um, in a tablet in both mm -hmm. O2, which by now as I know we. It, it's just a tall mode. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, <laughs> it's, it is wide. It's kind of awkward. But yeah. we, we have a tablet. Uh, do I have it here? Yeah, I do actually. It's it's just a little eight inch tablet here. And this shape. Um, oh, what is that? Is pretty, it's an Asus, uh, that's just a skin, but it's an Asus uh, Vivo Tab Note 8. It's pretty old now. It's still nice though for a tablet. Nice. But I like this form factor because if you, if you have it upright, it's actually usable this way, but it's mm -hmm. also usable this way. And mm -hmm. I think a phone, you would need it to be in a way where when you folded it, that, that would be kind of the aspect. You'd want to be able to use it tall and, and wide. That's that's the big thing for me with that. Interesting. And so I, I would I would hope that if this comes out, you would have that. It also looks like you could use it all sort of, sort of kickstandy, flippy ways, which <laughs> now what is Windows what is Windows about? And what is Surface about if it's not new ways to flip or rotate a phone? Exactly. Or a exactly. Yeah, you, there needs to be some. That's. I feel like the. What is the Surface brand? You know, some people say, "Oh, it's the premium PC experience." I, I don't even think that's what defines Surface. In my opinion, the original Surface, what made it special, was the kickstand, and that idea has kind of you know echoed through all of their devices. So with the Surface Book, it was the the detachable keyboard and the way the hinge work with the Surface Studio, it's the the anti gravity hinge and the way it kind of floats down. So whatever device Surface comes out with, it can't just be a screen. Like that's not what it's about. It's actually about the hardware making it great. You know that that flexible hardware or that cool new hardware edition. So yeah, I think if they did come out with a phone, I can almost guarantee 
it's not just going to be a fancy phone with a powerful processor. There's gonna, yeah. there has to be some some unique hardware thing to it. I don't know if it's going to be the the flippable screen. I think that'd be cool. Uh, I think a kickstand on a phone that might be kind of you know weird. But, it's, but this tent <laughs> mode that could be a way to get that kickstand functionality, but also have it not be kind of. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to say unnecessary size because obviously the Surface has that, but I think the tent mode could really be a way to do that with a phone where it'd be very useful. Do you think that it's possible we'd see a Surface phone this year with the tent thing that didn't have a screen and maybe next year that tent thing would have the screen to make it the full flip, uh, flip no, phone? No, <laughs> no, I think, I think what, Microsoft's waited so long that I think if they release a Surface phone, which again might not be called the Surface phone according to some people, but it's a Surface mobile <laughs> but Boltman, device. Boltman is claiming it won't be called a phone. He said it's going to be called the Surface ARM device. Surface yeah, AD. So the Surface whatever. <laughs> the smallest of these Surfaces, but not the Surface Mini. Um, they've waited so long to release it, they wouldn't release half a device. They would just, they would wait. People have said for... They, they, they'll release it when it's ready, and I agree with that sentiment. And and you look and you say, um, why if, why would you shut down Lumia production and stop making phones and then release half a device? When they do it, it's it's going to blow people away with innovation. The question will be, will it will it sell? That's the real question for me. Yep. It, if it has uh, full Windows 10, I mean, it, it, this was months ago it feels like that we talked about this the question you asked me was would you buy a phone would you switch to from Android to Windows if your phone could run full Windows 10 and and for me that would be the killer feature is running full Windows 10 on my phone so yeah I would buy it <laughs> I still wouldn't but that's you still okay. wouldn't yeah we'll, we'll see <laughs> <laughs> I, I just look I've said this I, I would replace if it was powerful enough and I had the income, I would replace a tablet with a two-in-one Surface Super Device, Super Phone, Mini Phone, ARM device. You know, if this tablet broke in half uh -huh. and, and, we, and the Surface one was out there, I would look at it. But <laughs> you still need it to work as a phone. And that's the thing to me. There's still stuff that I want to do with my phone that you can't do on Windows Phone that won't be fixed by the hardware that Microsoft releases. Mm -hmm. Facebook live streaming. I know it's stupid. Some people don't use it. That's fine. If you don't use that, then use whatever phone you want. But I feel some, sometimes, you know, people need to be aware that if you needed a car and you, and you were a lumberjack, you can't buy a car that you can't do your job in. Yeah. You know, if you needed to drive and someone said, well, that's great. Mm -hmm. I can't, like, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> doesn't matter how nice it is. If I need to lug a trailer and it doesn't have a trailer hitch, it doesn't matter how fast it goes or how efficient it is with electricity. Yep. Yep. That's, that's how right. I feel about a Surface phone. But I still think there are many, many people that would buy a device like this, including a lot of businesses. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's right. Yeah, we'll we'll see. I'm I'm excited for it. You know, we'll we'll see. I just have no idea. I will honestly. I, I feel like I need to promise that, like eating my hat or something crazy if Microsoft does release the flip Surface phone or Surface device because yeah, it it seems really really cool, but way out there. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that there's some there's some speculation that Samsung might be releasing a device that has some sort of uh, continuum like experience and it's got and they're also working on foldy things? I, I wouldn't be surprised because Samsung actually demoed a device like that, not at this CES, but at last at the twenty sixteen CES. They actually showed there was this lady who walked through this crowd and there was a phone and she unfolded it and it it was an Android tablet. It was a phone that turned into an Android tablet. So that was, you know, a year plus ago. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they did that. Here's a question for you. And I asked this on Twitter and I still don't really know the answer. If Samsung wants to take over cross-platform scaling of the experience of phone and PC, mm -hmm. why aren't they making Windows 10 variants of their devices? Hmm. 
That's a good question. <laughs> I, I understand that, that they would continue to make the Android one. I'm by no they're they're one of, they're I think the biggest Android seller on earth. Obviously, they wouldn't stop that. Yeah. But if if you wanted to market some sort of cross platform skipping form factor device with scalable UI or whatever, wh why wouldn't you at least do a variant with Windows 10? Because then you would have that experience. If you created a foldable device, it could scale the tablet phone mode, tablet mode, continuum PC mode with the composable <laughs> shell. I mean, isn't that it's and Samsung doesn't make that software. I mean, it's running Android. It's not like they make Android. So if they're making if they just want to sell hardware, why doesn't Samsung make a Surface phone and then advertise that and then and then have something like ads for both with Android and yeah. Microsoft, and then say, pick your flavor. I you know, I don't know why they wouldn't do that, but I, maybe they have a deal with Google. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. I know it felt like a few years ago, three, four years ago, there was this trend that it was almost getting started, and I was super excited. It was, the, I think, Asus or Acer. I can't remember who came out with these suite of tablets where you could like turn on a switch and switch back and forth between Android and Windows. And at the time, I was like, yes, please, we need more of this. And then it's like it disappeared. We stopped hearing about that, and I'm not sure why. <laughs> mm. uh, Abdul pointed out in the comments here on the live stream that uh, he said because Samsung loves using their own fork on software, which Android allows, Windows doesn't. So mm. I see. maybe there are some factors there that, that I didn't think about. I see. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good point. That's a good point. Well, mm. all right. Oh. Uh, Watching forward in the current setup, so I mean, these we're talking a lot about theoretical devices, but um, I guess to get more hands on with something that you could actually download today, albeit you'd have to be an insider. We did get a new build in the last week, exciting! Um, We've been getting a lot of new yeah, builds. Was this how it always build was? 15014. It is um, not substantially different in terms of some things, but there are some things worth noting here. So there's some taskbar changes. I'm just reading directly from our article here, just a few snippets. It says, right away, you notice that the Cortana search bar has been redesigned. The search bar bo search box is now much brighter. Um, so there's just little changes there. Um, the eBooks is probably the biggest feature change, though. So basically, as, as, as it would sound, eBooks are on their way to Windows 10 in a very odd way, in my opinion through Edge. Really? Have you heard about this show? Isn't that I, a bit odd? Yeah, so I was surprised. I thought it was going to be Very its own... It's weird to me that this is how they would do it. It and They're they're desperate for people to do Edge. <laughs> I thought it was so going to be its own standalone app. Section, <laughs> you will find a new section of Microsoft Edge for managing all your eBooks, as well as a button to a new store section to purchase more eBooks. I know people read and stuff, and that's fine. And I, I think it says Ed supports EPUB file format. This could be great for uh, textbooks and that type of thing. But uh, you know, navigation and stuff—it just seems a bit odd that it would be through Edge. Maybe in my mind, I'm closed-minded. I'm viewing it as a web browser. I, I guess it could just <laughs> be like a—I don't know though. You'd think they could have made an app for this, but I, I guess Edge is fine. If it works, it works, right? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I I have I don't know why, but I have a hard time reading ebooks on a screen that's not an e-ink screen. Yeah, no, that's understandable. So yeah, I'm I don't know. I'm somewhat excited about it, but yeah, I I'm not a I'm not a regular screen book reading person. I I like regular books or e-ink books, but for some reason I just can't do screen books. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I guess this is better than nothing to have it there. Oh, yeah. It's a bit odd to me. I mean, I Kindle is not the most supporting of um, of Windows 10. I mean, they have some Windows apps. They have a desktop one and a touch one. It's not awful. It's just not the most native thing in the world. So I suppose I would look into buying. I don't have to have textbooks anymore. I'm almost done with uni, and I haven't had to buy a textbook. I'm on a placement year. But... Um, just seems a bit, bit of a weird location to put books yeah. in a web browser that honestly many people probably don't know about. But then again, I think a lot of people don't even know the store exists. So <laughs> <laughs> that is true. 
I definitely think there's people that out of the hundreds of millions that use Windows 10, I, I bet you millions of them have never even heard of a store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't know what it is. They don't even want to open it. They're yeah, it's it's one of those mystery things. <laughs> But yeah, with with books, and as Baldwin says on the live stream there, yeah, if, if you got textbooks or college books, whatever you need, uh, if and if it's cheaper, like Logonoff says, yeah, sure, why not? I don't, I mean, if it's cheaper, I'm all for it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't read a lot of. I, if I did, I do think e ink's good. Uh, I still wish they could figure out e ink with a regular screen, but I guess that's just technologically impossible. I guess so. I was really hoping by now we'd have those, but yeah. Yep, we'll we'll see. For you, could on uh, like Windows phones that isn't on all Windows phones, but it's on many Windows phones, like uh -huh. Glance Screen. Uh huh. What could uh, they do? Could they do Glance Screen for a book? Glance Screen. So what is Glance Screen again? Glance Screen was on when you when your screen was off, it would show the black screen, but then white text would appear oh, for like yeah, block. yeah. It was. So like AMOLED to screens are off except for – basically it would just be night mode. Mm -hmm. uh, on a new device, it would probably just be an AMOLED to screen in night mode. Um, I don't know. Maybe that would be easier to read and it would feel a little less bright. I think there's a lot of backlight when you have uh, uh, electronic displays. So, yeah. That's but maybe like a great glance screeny thing or AMOLED with uh, night mode activated. That could be good for reading. So I – you know – there was one time because yeah, I, I I have that on my phone. Ex actually, on my watch, I also have that feature. And I was wondering, like, how does it? What's the difference in battery life, right? Does it really? And you'd be surprised if you look online to try and see, like, quantify how much does it reduce battery life. You you don't really get a straight answer. <laughs> so I don't actually know how much less battery you would actually use. But you're saying more less about the battery, more about the readability. Just reading experience, uh, you would have less uh, light shining at your eyes. Yeah, that's true. Some that's people true. can't read night mode. Anyway, so that that's probably one of the most substantial changes, but I, I guess just to run through some of the other things there, uh, personalization in the creator's update, we'll see uh, some changes including custom apps, or mm -hmm. custom, I'm, not, I'm sorry, custom colors um, for the custom accent color. So apparently you can even type in the RGB value. Um, and so that that's nice, I guess. Uh, you, sometimes you can, I will say you can type you in the want to yeah you color. can type in the RGB value, but it has to be one of the colors listed. Otherwise, it won't work. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> but that's still a step in the right direction. So that's nice. Yeah. Better than before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's also um, storage sense. I feel I feel my prediction, Sean, is that within a month we will see a thread where storage sense has accidentally deleted something someone never wanted deleted and they will be upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a way to automatically clear, it says automatically clearing app data and temporary files that aren't being used and by deleting items in the recycle bin that are over 30 days old, I'm sure this will backfire and we will see a Reddit post about it at some point. <laughs> but um, in any event, it is there. Also the battery panel, um, They'll see a new battery panel. They're gonna. It's you get. It isn't functional yet, but it, when it is functional, you'll be able to basically choose how much performance you want versus battery usage. Mm -hmm. And so that's a nice option as well. It's not quite here yet, but it at least it looks like it's on the way. Yep. You know, uh, as somebody who before obviously now I've, well, I've looked into it, so I understand what's going on under the hood, but. I wish on stuff like that, because that's on your phone, it's coming to Windows now, I wish there'd be somewhere you can click and be like, what is actually going on? What does performance mean? What does battery mean? Like, it, it will make your computer slower if you want it on battery. It'll make your computer faster. Like, right? There needs to be some sort of description so people are like... <laughs> knows what is happening to their device. Yeah, because I mean, you and I might not know it, but other people might, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's an option on um, on Android Launcher, or not, uh, sorry, Aero Launcher, which is on Android, but it's made by Microsoft Garage, and it's, um, you can turn off animations to make it run like a little bit better. Hmm, oh, interesting. And I actually like it. <laughs> I, I don't, I mean, some animations look nice, but like, some people are obsessed with, oh, how does it load and how does it pop up or scroll down? And I just, it sometimes I just want it to appear and be a little snappier. <laughs> yeah. You know, back in the days of Windows Vista, I don't know if you remember this or not, but there used to be 
uh, live wallpapers. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. And it would kill your uh, your performance. It will heat up your computer. If you were on a laptop, your battery life would only be like 30 minutes. <laughs> but I miss my live wallpaper. <laughs> Just little things, mate. Little things. Yeah, I'm I'm one of those guys, Sean, that you refer to, where they take off a an obscure feature and I get mad. <laughs> oh, you you. There's a Reddit thread for you, mate. I don't know why the camera's <laughs> unfocused here. There's some guy and he was just raged off the rails, oh. all caps, screaming oh, <laughs> about how how I think it was how networks show up in a DNS server and what order they appear and how you can't customize what order they show up in. <laughs> it's like, it's just, but it was like, oh, it was just screaming. It's like, <laughs> I, I, for him personally, maybe it's the worst day of his life, but I don't know, sometimes you just, you wonder if it's worth that much anger. That being said, I'm gonna have a rant later in the show where you all be thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Bolt, Boltman saying he misses gadgets. But I think he's kidding. Oh yeah, I can understand that. What, what are there any other features that you said you get upset when they move little features? Are you what? Do you have one that comes to mind? One OneDrive uh, file syncing. That the, I know. The placeholders. Like, what's up with that? That was so they useful. They still haven't fixed it. Yeah, and they keep promising. It's like it's already so old now. And then uh, OneNote's been getting better, but they they removed a ton of useful features. You know, from the Windows 8 OneNote. <laughs> Did they even have the radial dial? No, they never brought. Now it's the Surface Dial. My that was. I love the radio dial. They they never brought that back. <laughs> now it's gone. Sorry, mate. Yeah. Can't have it. Yeah. Can't have nice things. And you certainly can't keep nice things. Yeah, I think one of my most sad moments in in tech history of somebody removing something was when Google removed iGoogle. Do you remember iGoogle at all? I do not. That, that, that's probably why they removed it. Not very many people use it. It was your home, your Google home screen, instead of it just being blank with your search bar, you could add widgets, you could add your calendar, you could add your news feed, you could add stock tickers. So I had this whole page customized with like, it was just, my, I opened up my browser, Google was there, all my stuff was there. Where did it all go? They, they removed the feature. I feel like gadgets on Windows, did a little bit of that, but not as well as I Google. I have no idea. I don't know why those features are removed. <laughs> I guess I guess it's uh they well the, what they when they were, when they get rid of them they say things like uh, based on user user statistics it's you know whatever so they're basically saying it's not worth the trouble. Yeah, basically they're saying it in a nice way, but they're basically saying it's not worth the trouble. <laughs> it's not worth the trouble to keep it for Sean Ong. I, I understand. No, no, and they're not going <laughs> to develop it. Just few the things that really bug me. Is when it's something where in my brain I'm thinking it doesn't involve a ton of maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but you know, it's something I don't know. Sometimes there's probably more maintenance than we understand, but it is frustrating at times. Yep. Yep. Oh well. Yeah, I, I, I Edward, <laughs> I, I know they said placeholders are going to come back, but I'm here on a device and they're not here yet. So no. I just I, I don't know when they're coming back. <laughs> yeah, I I don't. I, I have so I, I had a workaround where you could access it through the network and it works okay it's a little slow but I've just resolved to put my OneDrive on a massive SD card and hope I never go above 128 gigabytes <laughs> I will I, plug I will plug a video Sean you have a video on how to use OneDrive on an SD card where even if you remove it it doesn't cause any problems yes yep I do That's so. <laughs> ever, definitely worth checking that out <laughs> so yeah but just, I, in my opinion, placeholders are still number one, so I'm I'm, I'm hanging tight, hoping they bring that back soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, oh, you know what else we didn't talk about? Spe we're talking about removing features. Did you hear the people bar is going to be moved back to another update? Ah, uh, I've been looking forward to trying that out. What's... I apologize, or I have bad news for you. <laughs> yeah, it, sorry, not going to happen. <laughs> oh, at it all? Will eventually, or... apparently. Oh, what do you mean? It not going to happen at all, or not going to happen until? No, later? it's not going to happen in the creators update. So it'll be bumped. To, I think it's their phrasing was that it's going to be bumped to the next major Windows 10 update release oh. or something like that. Oh, wow. So for those who don't know, the people bar was this great looking thing where you'd have like I've actually grown a very to like circle icons. Um, and these little icons you can put in the task bar. And when you wanted to talk to someone, you could go over them, and then you could use any type of, you know, all these different types of ways you could communicate with them. And it was integrated with all these other Microsoft services, and it looked really cool, and it looked really sleek. 
and we all got all these mock-ups and we were all excited for it and then now it turns out it's gonna be pushed back to a later update ah see I, I glanced at that headline and I thought they meant that we'll see it after the creators update come like that's the major release I didn't realize that means the release after the creators update I'm sad about from what that. I can tell unless someone wants to as far as I know they pushed it back um, I, I guess that's Redstone 3 Oof. So, who know? I don't know. I, it's it's not going to be with the creators update. But so you know, I'd be, rather like, them wait and get it right than release something that nobody's going to use and then they have to remove it later. You know, I feel like that's, that, if they can get it right, it'll be powerful. It'll be very powerful. But they need to they need to get that right. <laughs> yeah, it's frustrating though because and but this is the weak point of having an insider program and an open Microsoft. Yeah. If, yeah. if we had never seen the people bar and then it was pushed back and, and then it showed up in October, in October we'd be like, yeah, buddy, look at this new people bar. Yeah. But because we thought it was coming in the next couple months and then it's been pushed back, then we get disappointed. So, um, yeah, I mean, we'll deal with it. Um, I, yeah. It's a little disappointing. We'll, 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 make it, we'll make it through this, Sean. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll mourn and we'll make it through. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we should probably move on. Uh, we don't want to. We're trying to cut down a few minutes off of some of these podcasts. So, um, so yeah, why don't we? You had a little story about Volvo. Did you want to talk yeah, about? Yeah. So really cool. If you haven't seen the video, uh, check out the video. It's on the on Microsoft website where Volvo and Microsoft released this really amazing commercial about how Cortana will work with Volvo and the kind of the, the idea of the future of the car and it's really it's not like an ad it's more like a cinematic like it's almost like a movie and it really feels like James Bond like it, it just feels amazing I, I got goosebumps watching I'm like yes I need this I need Cortana in my self-driving car <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah it's just cool it, it just makes me excited for the future and you know, the, they, the, the main point in the video, I would say, was the fact that you could work while driving in the car because the car is self-driving and is smart and does everything for you. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think Cortana in the car is fantastic. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the car being another smart gadget. You know, Sean, we have all this. And you know what we still don't have? What? A, a way to have continuum extend from your Windows phone to a car. Whoa, what would that even look like? <laughs> look like something that won't happen until Samsung does the same thing. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Wait, continuum in your car? So that'd be like All a... <laughs> I want is to be able to use my phone. It already happened. They have Google like Android Auto and like like Apple has their own thing. Yeah, and it's just it's so funny because I always see these car updates and they go, oh look at this Cortana might be integrated with this Azure might be integrated with that. Oh look at this Cortana in a self-driving car and you're like, how hard is it to get maps from my phone to show up on a screen? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that that you know, I, operating systems of the monitors within cars are limiting. It's not like they're just blank mirror cast receivers. So it's not like it's just Microsoft's fault. I'm not blaming them. <laughs> it's just as soon as as soon as, sometimes see, people thought, oh, is Samsung going to steal the thunder if they make a foldable phone? It would a little bit, but you know what the benefit would be? Huh? When when OEMs and people using Android and iOS make innovation. If Microsoft builds devices that work with that same tech, they yeah. can actually take advantage of it. So like Microsoft Wallet exists. I don't see it advertised much. It doesn't work in the UK as far as I know. Maybe it does with a couple <laughs> cars. Maybe it doesn't work with my bank in the UK. But in any event, Microsoft Wallet wouldn't be a thing if Android Pay and Apple Pay weren't around. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. And so, so sometimes, I know it would hurt Microsoft in some ways, but I almost, when people talk about these continue devices and having dummy monitors anywhere that you could hook up your phone or or a phone with continuum or your tablet or your laptop to, I almost wish that like Samsung or Android was known for that because then people would actually have dummy monitors everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and you could have the same thing with the car. Like mm -hmm. like the car would just be like a dummy sat nav. It would have its own, but then there would be a mode, like a mirror cast mode, just a phone mirror. 
And if that just worked with Miracast, that would be fine. And then you could use it with Android or Windows Phone. It would be built towards Android, but we would benefit from it. So I actually hope that some of this happens. <laughs> you're, you're having a lot of good ideas on the podcast today, Sean. <laughs> yeah, I, I you feel know like what? We, we need to get to out our, our patent, uh, <laughs> patent lawyer. Yeah, patent somebody's here filing on Microsoft patents. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see that in the patent soon, and you can uh, you can claim that it was your idea. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, in any event, but yeah, no, I think I like you said, working a self-driving car that'd be pretty nice. Are you um? Have you ever been in a self-driving car? I've ridden in the back of a Tesla Model S. Oh, and, look at you! Oh, it was so it was in the back, but hey, it was really good. And uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just impressed. You know, they they they're doing a good job, and they're I think because of them, all these other major auto manufacturers are feeling the pressure and, and putting their stuff out too. So we've seen Nissan, Volvo. Uh, Mercedes and pro possibly others that I haven't heard about all coming out with these autopilot features so yeah props to just like you know what what um, you know Apple did with the iPhone and the iPad you know uh, launching the revolution I think Tesla's you know props to them for launching this because I'm excited <laughs> I think I've said this on the podcast before so I won't make a long joke out of it if we found out that Elon Musk was sent from the future to save the planet I don't <laughs> think people would be that surprised <laughs> Yeah. Like somebody like he went back in time, made PayPal so he could afford to do all this innovation, and then he's building Tesla cars <laughs> and he's building solar walls uh -huh. and changing the earth. I, just someday, if we found out, to see, yeah, we dropped him back in time. He was up there in like 20, 2090. We sent him back there so he could save the planet. You'd be like, yeah, that's believable. Yeah. And you know, Elon Musk. If you've ever heard about his upbringing, like he has all the the right criteria for like a Marvel superhero story. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like he really is a real life Tony Stark. Have you? And I, I, he's great, and I think a lot of his tech is great. And he was oh, in the Big Bang Theory, so I mean, extra part. Oh, was he really? I didn't see. Yeah, that. he did a cameo. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> Oh, um, you got some other stuff on the way too. You said the first VR headsets are coming up? Yeah, so you know we've been talking a lot about these uh, Microsoft VR headsets. I was really bummed when I went to CES and saw that they were there, yes, but they were behind glass bars. Like you could not try them on, or you could try them on, but they, they weren't turned on. So, you know, still on the hopeful. And then there's now reports that in March, uh, they will be available to developers. Uh, it sounds like only the developers who are going to be at the conference will be getting these VR headsets or getting the chance to purchase these VR headsets. So uh, I probably won't get one. I don't know who will. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're going to start to see them coming out. Um, on February 8th, related news, Microsoft is hosting a big developers event. And uh, I've heard from the HoloLens community that that's when we can, us HoloLens developers can expect to hear a lot more about how to uh, make our apps uh, uh, Windows holographic friendly for all headsets, not just the HoloLens. So I'm, I'm looking oh, forward to that. Yeah. So I yeah, so. very, very exciting. Lots of fun stuff. Microsoft is going to kill the VR space. Like Oculus, Vive, I, my, my guess, my prediction is uh, Microsoft will dominate the VR space. Uh, they they lost the phone, but they're gonna win VR. That's that's my prediction. <laughs> I think it'd be great if that was the case. Um, there's a lot of different things in VR, but man, wouldn't it be wonderful if we, as people cover Microsoft to say, you know, because window desktops are still around. Uh, people act like they don't. There are some <laughs> markets that are not as big. They're still around. PCs exist. Mm -hmm. But like people talk like phones, they lost. It'd be so nice if the next big thing was something that like Windows 10 was all over, because that could end up helping Windows 10 as a whole. Yep. Yep, that's so right. It's, it's really great, and it's 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 good for other things. So that's wonderful. Looking forward to it. That's next month. So uh, we'll, hopefully we we'll get all the news there. Yep. I got a couple quick things. This has been a very positive podcast. I just wanna, I just wanna say, apparently Minecraft on Windows 10 Mobile is not going to be getting an update and it won't be supported. And I just find that very saddening because mm. it's owned by Microsoft. Yeah. A Microsoft owned product is going to not be supported <laughs> on a Microsoft made operating system. 
that's just to me it's just baffling that'd be like if you found out skype wasn't going to be on windows anymore yeah oh, it's, it's just <laughs> they, i know that they buy these things it's not like they bought them all for a phone i i know that i'm not dumb like i know that they bought swift key for ai i know that they bought minecraft for other reasons but it's just odd to me when when they when when a Microsoft made product loses support or will lose support on a Microsoft made operating system, it's just so frustrating. As as I don't even know if I call myself a Windows 10 mobile user. I'm like a reluctant Windows 10 mobile user because I can't afford another Android phone. But like it's just so frustrating to see two things owned by the same company that aren't going to work together. It's just very frustrating to me. Yeah. So I don't know. You know I. I keep hearing these little, in my mind, they all sound like little hints, and I don't know. I'm I'm kind of wondering if we are really gonna see, you know, the future of Windows Mobile just being the full Windows 10, and this is yet another hint of that coming. <laughs> I know you disagree, that, but that could I don't be. Know. <laughs> that could be it, and and the benefit of that would be it would just probably be full Minecraft, but yeah. just on a phone. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, oh, I don't know. If it's that, then it's fine, I guess. Still, they probably should just keep supporting it in any way. But because they're gonna be, they're still the almost. If it comes out where a super service phone plus like an HP device and maybe a couple others are running full Windows 10, that's great. But what about the people who stuck with it and stuck with Windows through the days of Windows 8, through the days of Windows Phone 8.1? through the fact that so many devices didn't get upgraded to Windows 10 Mobile and stuck with it through the yeah. insider programs, through the bugs, through the Skype remaining in preview even though it's been out for like a year. And then if they were like, yeah, full Windows 10 on ARM, um, we're gonna kinda, we're gonna keep supporting the universal apps from the other one, but moving forward, eventually it's gonna lose support. It's just, oh, that would be so sad if that was the case. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've never played Minecraft. I still want to try it. <laughs> I'm not even a Minecraft guy. I've literally never played it in my life. I just think it's weird yeah. to have two things owned by Microsoft that don't go together. I, so Pretty Microsoft bought Minecraft, and they really haven't used it. You know, I, I feel like there's some grand secret plan of Minecraft that we don't know about yet. I know Minecraft... Living in a Minecraft world through HoloLens. Well, so they demoed Minecraft for the HoloLens, but none of us HoloLens users have yet to experience it yet. They're, they're keeping it under wraps. So I feel like there's some sort of grand Minecraft plan. I, I, I don't know. I feel it in my bones that we don't know about. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Oh, well... Um... Well, I guess that's almost it for the day. I would like to point out one thing that broke during the show. Oh, okay. Brian Roper, famous for his demonstrations of um, Windows at Microsoft conferences, has apparently been laid off, along with um, the 700 employees that are reported to be laid off because he tweeted, as one of the Microsoft folks impacted by layoffs today, my heart, ears, and network go out to anyone else impacted. Hashtag stay strong, hashtag new horizons. So, wow. Wait, what was his that, position again? Uh, I don't know his official title. You probably know him most for his I can be productive like a boss demonstrations of Windows 10. Oh, the, the guy with the hat. Yes, the guy with the hat. I'm what? sure he is a, a very nice man for other things. I'm just saying from a front-facing perspective of people who watch Microsoft conferences, he's a very Whoa. visible face. So, Wait, that's, uh, so, that's actually weird that he would get laid off. So I, I hope I hope everything works out for him and his family and everybody that gets well eyes with layoffs. I, I hope everyone finds a wow. new job very swiftly and that everything goes well and that they are okay. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. So the yeah, that's too bad. Yeah. Okay. Well, wow. Sorry to end on sad news. <laughs> it just it, it broke during the show. No, and that that was actually one of the news that, about the seven hundred uh, layoffs coming. I'm just surprised. Yeah, it was him because he's he plays a big role. But okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, there you go. I don't know. I don't know how this all works. I'm not a CEO for a reason. Yeah. I could never fire someone. <laughs> I don't. I would have such a hard time. Uh. Anyway, <laughs> on that sad and somber note, unless you have any good news to pick us up, mate, we gotta we gotta wind down. <laughs> I I think I think that's it for the day. I think we we had a good show. Sorry again, uh, everyone, for last week's uh, mystery episode. 
<laughs> that, that's, You'll uh, never know what happens. Yes. You'll ne- oh, yeah. We had a Surface Mini on the show. <laughs> Um, we actually had the Surface phone that we were talking about. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. We didn't have a thing. It, it was a normal. It was a good show. Sadly, lost in time and space for all time and eternity. Yes, yes. But yeah. All right, well, thanks, guys. Uh, as always, I'm, I'm one of your co-hosts, Sean, and uh, well, Sean Michael. Sorry. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Sean underscore Michael underscore UK, and my co-host, as always, is Sean Ong. You can find him on Twitter at Sean underscore Ong. And you can always find here our podcast on on Microsoft website. Make sure to check us out for all sorts of Microsoft related news. We have all sorts of uh, video breakdowns, and breaking news, all that type of stuff. A weekly recaps at the end of the week. You get a lot throughout the week. If you can't read all those, at least make sure to check out those weekly recaps because they break them down by category. So that's really handy and nice. And check out Sean's um, YouTube channel. Specific plug. For his video on how to use OneDrive with a micro SD card. So there you go. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. All right, thanks guys. We'll see you on the next one. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Great.